Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on gene expression or protein synthesis. It is meant for AP Biology Summit High School. As soon as Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA, scientists all over the world wanted to solve the genetic code. Mathematicians and physicists believed that they could, but after years of effort, two young molecular biologists cracked the code. In 1955, Marianne Grumberg Manigo, working at NYU, discovered an enzyme that linked nucleotides together into long polymers, and she began making artificial RNA strands. In 1960, 31-year-old Johann Heinrich Mathai, a German man, was working at NIH, the National Institutes of Health, near Washington, D.C. He worked with 30-year-old Marshall Nuremberg, who at the time had been working on making proteins artificially. The two men knew that protein production involved ribosomes and RNA, so they started by putting ribosomal RNA, which is inside of ribosomes, into a test tube with ATP, amino acids, DNA, and enzymes extracted from cells, but there was no protein synthesis. They thought that there must be another type of RNA, so they took a type of RNA from tobacco mosaic virus, and they wound up with a lot of proteins being made in the test tube. Nuremberg then went to Berkeley in California to join Heinz Frankel Conrad, another molecular biologist who had worked out the sequence of the tobacco mosaic virus protein. Mathai stayed behind to test other RNAs, especially the ones Marianne Grumberg Manigo was making. He tried PolyU, which was a synthetic RNA made by Manigo, and he got a lot of protein. He worked for five days almost around the clock, figuring out what type of protein it was and discovered it to be made of one type of amino acid, phenylalanine. But he didn't know how many nucleotides were needed to make phenylalanine. Nuremberg didn't have success in California and he came back to learn of Mathai's success. Nuremberg and Mathai wrote their results, published them, and Nuremberg went to a biochemistry conference in Russia to present their results. Matthew Messelson heard Nuremberg's presentation and he told Francis Crick about it. Crick told Nuremberg to present the results to a much larger group of scientists. Now Nuremberg was famous. He returned to work with Mathai but wanted to make all the decisions. Mathai went back to Germany to work by himself. Nuremberg joined with Philip Letter and they discovered a length of RNA just three nucleotides long could make one amino acid. They defined a codon as a group of three nucleotides that specify a single amino acid within a polypeptide. The DNA-RNA language is written with an alphabet of four letters, A, T, C, and G. The polypeptide alphabet has 20 amino acid words. The genetic code clearly specifies which nucleotide sequence corresponds to which amino acid. Each codon specifies an amino acid. As you can see, there are more than one codon per per amino acid. For example, CUU, CUC, CUA, and CUG all code for leucine. Of the 64 triplets, only 61 are for amino acids. The other three, UAA, UAG, and UGA, are called nonsense or stop codons. The same code is used by all species, so it is universal. So how does a sequence of nucleotides specify a sequence of amino acids? The scientists we talked about confirmed that RNA is involved as an intermediate in producing proteins. Francis Crick summarized the flow of information involved in making proteins in a statement called the central dogma of molecular biology. DNA specifies RNA, which specifies proteins. In other words, information can only flow from DNA to RNA to proteins. There are two processes involved in the flow of information from DNA to RNA to proteins. The first is transcription, and the second is translation. Transcription occurs in the nucleus, but in prokaryotes, it occurs in the cytoplasm. Transcription is the process by which DNA transmits its information to RNA. The information in DNA is rewritten in the RNA, and then it is used by the cell to make proteins. An analogy for this is that RNA is a photocopy of the original DNA, which is always kept in a safe place. The RNA copy is a form called messenger RNA, or mRNA. It differs from DNA in three ways, even though it contains the same information. The first way is that the backbone sugar is ribose in RNA, 
and deoxyribose in DNA. The second is that uracil in RNA replaces thymine in DNA. And the third is that RNA is a single strand, whereas DNA is a double strand. Translation is the conversion of the message carried by the RNA into strings of amino acids, which are called polypeptides. So when the DNA makes RNA, it uses the process of transcription. When the RNA is used to make a polypeptide, that process is translation. In eukaryotes, transcription occurs in the nucleus and translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Messenger RNA passes through the nuclear membrane out to the cytoplasm where ribosomes stitch together the amino acids. When a cell makes a polypeptide, which becomes a protein, we say that the gene for that polypeptide has been expressed. Expression begins when RNA polymerase, which is an enzyme, transcribes the DNA gene into messenger RNA. There are several types of RNA polymerase, but they all make RNA in the same way. RNA polymerase transcribes the DNA into messenger RNA. It is only one direction and it doesn't need an RNA primer. Instead, the starting signal for the messenger RNA synthesis is a special sequence of DNA called a promoter. The promoter also determines which of the two DNA strands is the template and which is not. RNA polymerase recognizes the promoter, unwinds, and opens up the DNA. In bacteria, RNA polymerase recognizes and binds to the promoter, then begins to copy the template strand, the one of the two strands that is to be transcribed. In eukaryotes, transcription factors or proteins that lead the RNA polymerase to the right promoter. The transcription factors are specific to the promoter. Transcription initiation factors are the transcription factor and the RNA polymerase combined. Terminators are a special sequence that stop transcription. RNA polymerase is also responsible for hooking together the RNA nucleotides as they base pair along the DNA template. RNA, like DNA, also grows from the 5 to 3 direction, reading the DNA from the 3 to 5 direction. The transcription unit is the stretch of DNA that is transcribed. The DNA rezips as the RNA is transcribed. Transcription occurs at about 60 nucleotides per second. Enzymes in the nucleus modify the ends of the RNA before it leaves the nucleus. The 5 end gets a cap made of a guanine and three phosphate groups. It protects the tips of the RNA. It is where the RNA attaches to the ribosome. The 3 end gets a poly A tail made of many 50 to 250 adenines. The poly A tail protects the tip and it helps the RNA leave the nucleus. RNA is much longer than it has to be because genes, DNA, have long stretches that don't code for the protein. The RNA also has these areas. This form of RNA is called pre-messenger RNA. Pre-messenger RNA needs to be changed to become mature RNA. Introns are intervening sequences of DNA or RNA. Exons are sequences that directly code for the protein. So introns don't code for anything, exons contain the code. Most of the RNA strand is introns. More than 98% of human DNA doesn't code for proteins. RNA splicing removes the introns before the messenger RNA enters the cytoplasm. It then becomes a continuous code with no introns. The ends of the introns are coded for splicing. These ends are detected by SNRNPS or SNRPs. That stands for small nuclear ribonucleoproteins. They are made of RNA and protein. The type of RNA they're made of is small nuclear RNA or SNRNA. SNRPs join with other proteins to create a larger complex called the spliceosome. That cuts off the ends of the introns and joins the ends of the exons. There are three main types of RNA involved in protein synthesis. Messenger RNA carries genetic information from DNA that specifies the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide. Transfer RNA carries each amino acid to a codon in messenger RNA. And ribosomal RNA combines with proteins to form the ribosomes. Ribosomes are found in all cells. They are made of a small and large subunit. Both are made of RNA, rRNA, and proteins.
The large subunit has a groove for the growing polypeptide. The small subunit has a groove for reading the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is always a different sequence depending on what protein it codes for, but our RNA always has the same structure in all organisms. Ribosome's main task is to read the instructions in messenger RNA and translate it into a string of amino acids. Ribosomes also recognize where to start and stop a polypeptide. Transfer RNAs are very specific. Only one kind of anticodon can pick up only one kind of amino acid. At the bottom of the transfer RNA is a sequence of three nucleotides. That is called the anticodon. It um, base pairs match with the codon on the messenger RNA. Cells must have at least one transfer RNA for each of the 20 amino acids, but because there are 61 codons for the 20 different amino acids, there may be as many as 61 different transfer RNAs. So how does the transfer RNA recognize the right amino acid? Transfer RNAs join to the amino acid by a high energy bond created by enzymes. Transfer RNA and the amino acid recognize each other because different transfer RNAs have different 3D structures recognized by the enzymes. Each charging enzyme has two binding sites, one for a specific transfer RNA and one for the specific amino acid. Messenger RNA contains signals that tell the ribosome where to start and stop. The first step of translation is initiation. This attaches the ribosome small subunit to the messenger RNA. The start site in messenger RNA is always the codon AUG, which specifies methionine. Methionine usually is removed from the polypeptide later. In eukaryotes, the ribosome attaches to the five end of the messenger RNA and moves along until it finds the first AUG. Therefore, the first AUG is the start codon. All others after that are methionines in the polypeptide. In prokaryotes, a sequence about six nu nucleotides long upstream from the initiation AUG distinguishes between the initiation site and internal methionine. After initiation, the first amino acid is moved into place. The first transfer RNA is attached and elongation can begin. The polypeptide chain elongation consists of three steps. The first is putting the next amino acid into place. The second is forming a peptide bond between the growing polypeptide and the next amino acid. The third is moving the ribosome to the next codon. Every amino acid is joined to its neighbor in exactly the same way. Elongation requires the participation of the large ribosomal subunit, which bonds to the initiator transfer RNA. It also requires messenger RNA and small ribosomal subunits. The large subunit has three special pockets for the transfer RNA the P site, the A site, and the E site. The P site holds the transfer RNA carrying the growing polypeptide. The A site holds the transfer RNA carrying the next amino acid to be added to the chain. Discharging transfer RNAs leave the ribosome from the E site. The large subunit of the ribosome binds to the messenger RNA. Next, the transfer RNA with the amino acid binds to the codon. When the P and A sites are filled, an enzyme in the ribosome links the amino acids with a peptide bond. The transfer RNA in the P site falls away from the ribosome. The ribosome moves forward and the transfer RNA in the A site winds up in the P site. As the ribosome moves down the messenger RNA, the transfer RNA in the P site is released and falls away. The cycle continues until all the codons in the messenger RNA are read. In bacterium, each elongation cycle which is the addition of one amino acid, takes about 1 20th of a second. Therefore, the synthesis of an average polypeptide between 400 and 1200 amino acids takes 20 to 60 seconds. As soon as the start AUG moves far enough from the ribosome, another ribosome attaches to the messenger RNA and starts producing another polypeptide. Several ribosomes, as little as 80 nucleotides apart, may be attached to a single messenger RNA at the same time. This complex is called a polysome, which is short for a polyribosome. This mass production enables the cell to make the amount of proteins it needs. A stop codon, A, um, which is going to be UAA, UAG, or UGA, ends the polypeptide chain. 
This process is called termination. When the ribosome reaches the stop codon, there will be no corresponding transfer RNA. Instead, a protein called a release factor binds to the stop codon. The same enzyme that makes the polypeptide bonds now cuts the polypeptide from the last transfer RNA, releasing it. The polypeptides will fold into functioning proteins. After termination, the ribosome comes apart and moves to another messenger RNA. The amino acid sequence determines the 3D structure the polypeptide folds into. A protein may contain a single polypeptide or several. The newly made proteins must then find their way to the right destination. The new polypeptides have address labels. The amino acid sequence contains the information that specifies where the protein should go. There are usually several amino acids on the end of the polypeptide that tells it where to go. The signal peptide is a block of 4 to 12 amino acids on a polypeptide that directs it to its destination. It remains part of the protein if it stays inside the cell. If it's secreted, the signal peptide is removed. Free ribosomes that are not attached to the ER make proteins that dissolve in the cytosol and function there. Bound ribosomes attached to the ER make proteins that become part of the endomembrane system or that are secreted by cells, like insulin. All protein synthesis starts in free ribosomes, and depending on what type of protein is being made, the growing polypeptide will direct the ribosome to attach to the ER or not. This is also accomplished by the signal peptide. SRPs, signal recognition particles, are protein RNA complexes, and they take the ribosome to a receptor protein on the ER and attach it there. Each species has its own characteristic DNA, although, although all living organisms share the same chemistry of life. All DNA is made of the same stuff and follows the same rules. Biologists think that life began on Earth just once. If that is true, then at one time, all organisms were of one kind and their genetic material was the same. So how did we all become so different? Mutations are permanent changes in the sequence of DNA. The different alleles of a gene are created by mutations in the original sequence. Although evolution depends on the accumulation of changes in the DNA, most mutations are harmless or meaningless. Mutations usually occur spontaneously as random events in the cell. For example, the bonds between A and G bases and the backbone sugar are slightly unstable. As a result, each cell in the human body loses 5 to 10,000 A and G nucleotides each day. Rarely, DNA polymerase makes the wrong nucleotide in a sequence, causing a mutation. Certain agents, called mutagens, increase the amount of mutations. Mutagens are environmental factors that can cause mutations, like ultraviolet light, radiation, chemicals, or cigarettes. Mutation rate is how often mutations occur. The number of changes per nucleotide per generation determines the mutation rate. It depends on how often a sequence mutates and how efficiently cells repair those mutations. There are also mutation hotspots, which are areas in a gene that are more likely to mutate than others. The average rate of mutation in bacteria is only 1 in 10 million replications of DNA. We've discussed chromosomal mutations in the past that affect the whole chromosome, but there are also several point mutations. Those are changes in one or several nucleotide pairs, as opposed to chromosomal mutations, which change large regions of a chromosome. A point mutation may be a base substitution, the replacement of one base or nucleotide by another. An insertion is the addition of one or more nucleotides. A deletion is the removal of one or more nucleotides. Insertions and deletions are usually more detrimental because they change the number of bases, therefore shifting the code and messing up the reading frame. Substitutions usually only affect one amino acid and oftentimes are less detrimental.